I'm currently doing my build log and I'm at the point where I want to explain the drive system in more detail. Um, instead of spending an hour typing it all out, I figured it would be easier to shoot a quick little five minute video. Um, here's my drive system inside the sphere, which the sphere is pretty beat up. It's been through about three different uh, drive systems, including I started out with a single axle pendulum drive. Uh, so there's a lot of scratches on this sphere. A lot of extra holes drilled, but um, at least you can see inside. When I decided to land on this drive system and actually go for using this system, um, I really needed something that met a couple criteria. One, I wanted to do something that didn't require 3D printing because at the time I started this I didn't have a 3D printer. Um, I, now I have one, but I haven't set it up yet. But uh, originally I wanted something that I didn't need a 3D printer. Um, I also didn't want something that required a ton of different motors. So there's some really, really great drive systems out there. Um, Ed's, um, Eric, and James Bruton, they all have brilliant drive systems. They all seem very reliable, but they all require not only a lot of motors and servos, they also require a lot of software and computer skills which I don't have. Uh, so this is actually a completely analog system. Um, something else I wanted was something that was pretty fairly easy to drive but also reliable and Kevin Gorby was the one who originally made this drive system and I thought he did a really good job of kind of getting the most bang for your buck in terms of maneuverability and things like that but also keeping costs down and keeping it relatively simple so let me explain to you a little bit basically everything in here is using servo city parts uh, the motors the motor controller um, all the channeling the only things that aren't servo city are the weights in the bottom which I'll show better later uh, the Omni wheels are from Vex Robotics and then the head mass system I kind of built out of wood but let me go ahead and get in here so the body is basically made up of channeling from Servo City you can see the bolt here that's what holds um, all my weights in the bottom I'll, I'll see if you can see them I have some regular dumbbells I also threw in these little uh, two and a half pound hand weights um, but basically all the weight is here at the bottom and I have my two motors uh, they're basically I think they're 165 um, HD planetary motors from Servo City and they are hooked up to these six inch Omni wheels uh, from Vex Robotics there's also these stabilization arms that come out the sides and I have two and a half inch Omni wheels hook to those and one thing that those do is because I don't know if you can see they're so high up in the sphere it really helps stabilize when driving a big problem that a lot of hamster drives have is when you start to move forward the head you know swings back a lot and these really help keep the head mass straight up um, I've even added just a fraction of weight shifted to the front so that when my BB-8 drives his head actually leans forward a little bit like the movie version um, but basically I mocked all this up in 1,2,3D and then I bought the parts and put it together so I have my two drive wheels you'll notice that the wheels are actually at a 45 degree angle I think that this gives uh, this particular hamster design a little more traction than others and it also keeps everything very close to the center which enhances stable stabilization and stuff like that like I said before this is all completely analog so I'm not using any software to help stabilize him I'm sure somebody could use this same method and put an Arduino in there and and write coding that would help stabilize and add dynamic stabilization and make it even better. Um, I have no doubt that this could be improved on. 
I'm not at the point where I'm willing to learn all that. I will eventually, but I wanted something that I could build now, be semi-reliable, and I can upgrade in the future. So if I want, I can add, you know, stabilization and dynamic balancing and stuff like that. Also, right now, currently, the head mast is just uh, pretty still. But there is room to create a fully animated independent head system. Now because of this design there won't be room for a head counterweight but I've been looking into some stuff with springs or possibly resistance cables to kind of act as my counterweight. Um, but again that's something that I can always upgrade later. Uh, so I do plan on making the head movable independent of the body, but for now uh, this works just fine. You can see I actually have my magnets um, on this sort of like little shock system. It's basically a sponge in there and that just helps any irregular irregularities in the ball shape. I know that the magnets will be right here as close to the top as possible. The casters basically stop the magnets from rubbing and the shocks allow it to move and dip if there's any soft spots in the ball or if it's not a true uh, perfect sphere, this can kind of roll along with that and adjust. Um, I currently have the Servo City dual motor controller and everything, like I said, is analog. So what's great about this system is it basically uses two motors. I have a motor in each wheel, and then I also have a separate servo motor that's, that's in the head. Um, so basically I have three controls. Two motors, which is I, I have rigged up as a tank drive, and then a separate servo in the head. And I'm basically, I'm using this, uh, remote control. Um, it's a fly sky. It has a bunch of different channels. I originally got this one when I was doing my single axle pendulum because I was going to have a lot of extra stuff to animate with extra switches and things like that. Um, once I do, you know, independent head movement, I can add stuff right into this controller. But that's it, I can turn it on and this controller basically controls everything to go forward, you know, both go both go forward. You can turn on the spot by putting one up and one down. It's a very simple uh, tank control. Um, for this hamster style, uh, I have an outer panel shell that is going on. This could also be done with a 3D printed panel. Um, you could also probably do the plan D, uh, plan B decals. You would just need to do your hatch a little different than mine. Currently I basically have, this is a seven inch hole that I've cut and I have my hatch door that has a separate seven inch cap piece taped to this piece of Sintra that I've thermoformed and painted. So basically that sits that lines right up and then there's countersunk screws that go in that hold it into place. Um, but once that's on it makes it where it's flush inside the wheels can roll over that very easily and once the rest of the panels are on the outside it's flush on the outside too. So that's basically it. Uh, if any of you guys have questions um, I'll try and get to them. Like I said, I have two 165 RPM uh, HD planetary motors. They're hooked into this dual motor controller right there. I have my RC receiver right there. And I'm currently powering it with the battery right there. Um, I have about, I want to say 15 to 18 pounds of weight in the bottom. Um, he seems to be pretty stable. I might add a little more because I still do get a little bit of wobble, but I think most of that I can resolve by just learning to drive him better. Uh, I've learned that getting him rolling is half of it, but 
really learning to puppeteer BB-8 properly makes a big difference. Um, but I really like this drive system. Kevin Gorby uh, did a great job thinking it up and executing it. Um, I think it really is kind of the most bang for your buck in that it's a pretty simple design, um, but it has pretty good results. So if anyone has any more questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the little bit of info. Thanks.